Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor, Mr. Ronald Smith Berkeley. The staff of the Labor Department to include our Deputy Labor Commissioner, Mrs. Michelle McLean, our Employment Services Manager, Mrs. Kishan Cupid Bratwith, our Senior Labor Officer from the Virgin Gorda Office, Ms. Barbara Titley, new employees to the British Virgin Islands, officers from the Government Information Service to include Ms. Smith, our GIS officer for the Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor, members of the various media houses, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the opening ceremony for the relaunch of the orientation for new employees. This is not a new initiative, as our Virgin Gorda office has actually been conducting these sessions on a weekly basis. You would recall that in 2013, the Employment Services Unit was relaunched, and this space which you occupy here today included training, this training room, so that we could run such sessions as this orientation. So we are here today to relaunch this very important program. And my role, the first one up, is to bid you welcome. I'm going to now, you're following along in your program, I will now immediately call our Deputy Labor Commissioner, Mrs. McLean, to invite God's presence by rendering the invocation. Mrs. McLean. Dear God, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you, Lord. We welcome your holy presence. We thank you, Lord, for the vision that you have given to us as a department. And Lord, we thank you, Lord, that through your presence and your will, Lord, we'll be able to execute it. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you have created for each and every individual to be here. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that they will be receptive to what is going to be said, what is going to be done. Lord, in the name of Jesus, and we thank you, Lord, that it, it's a way of creating for them to be proactive and for us to be proactive in the task and fulfilling the mandate of the Labor Department. And we just give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the true test, the true test of whether a department or an organization is providing the services that is expected from their customers is based on their feedback. Would you agree? Yes. yes. Our next two persons then, who will speak to us about their perspective and their experience when they saw the services of the Labor Department. The first will bring a perspective from the employee's point of view and the other from the employee's point of view. So please join me in welcoming to our first speaker, Mr. Trevor Grant, Chief Operations Officer from Driftwood Resorts who will speak about his experience as an employer when he dealt with the Labor Department. Let's welcome Mr. Grant as he comes. Good afternoon. Today is um, a very good day to, to actually be here and to talk, be talking about uh, issues with labor. And from my perspective as an employer, um, I have about 50 employees at different uh, locations, uh, Driftwood Resorts. We have employees in Virgin Gorda, Anagata, and our construction arm over in Tortola as well. So we run pretty much the, the gamut as far as um, um, employees. Dealing with labor, I found, was, was very easy. Um, we just went through a restructuring over at our property at uh, Nail Bay. And of course, because this was the first time that I was doing this, it, you know, I, it preempted that I needed some assistance or some guidance. And I must commend the Labor Department, uh, both in Virgin Gorda and in Tortola, on their ability to, to see where I was coming from and to make sure that they were able to, to guide me through the process. It was a very um, easy process once you know we opened dialogue with the Labor Department. And I mean, I must say, it made the process seamless almost. It helped also because um, my business partner, Doug Regals, and I, we always try to keep an open door policy as far as employees go. So we didn't have uh, 
any issues with employees as far as disputes and payments and all that sort of stuff, um, we made sure that the employees were paid exactly um, what they were supposed to be paid and you know, from advice from the labor, all the paperwork was done and we also were able to shift employees to our other companies. So the whole restructuring process went seamless. But I, could, I must say that I could not have done that um, in, a, in a seamless fashion without the guidance from the Labor Department. They've also assisted when I have um, any questions about the labor code that seems sometimes a little bit ambiguous. Um, you know, in they were able to break it down in layman's terms for me so I could understand exactly what section number X, Y, Z on page 104 meant if I wasn't clear. So um, these are the services that are there. Um, they have some very good um, labor officers that, you know, once you once you call them, you know, and if well, there's a dispute or a question, they're there for you. And um, they've, they've done me very well as far as providing me information and service. So um, I just wanted to say um, thank you so much to the Labor Department. It's been greatly improved. And uh, I just want to say thank you so much. So that's where, that's me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Grant. We're so glad that you were able to receive the services when you saw the Labor Department. We've heard from an employer's perspective. We're going to now hear from an employee's perspective, what the employee called the Labor Department and what they were able to receive as a result of that. So join me in welcome to the podium right now, Ms. Marcia Brown, who's agreed to come and speak to us about her perspective as an employee when she saw the services of the Labor Department. Please welcome Ms. Brown as she comes. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Marcia Brown. I am, an, I am an employee here in the British Virgin Island. I am here to share my experience with the Labor Department as an employee dealing with my situation towards my employer. As an employee, sometimes we might face some discomforting challenges with our employer. And I am here to encourage you, the public as employees, the Labor Department is here for you, pertaining to issues which might occur on the job. I have been working with a, with a company here for the past 14 years, and I was dismissed wrongfully by my employer in January of this year. I did not argue with my employer or even exchange any word of anger. I did, not, I did not know which step to take to seek legal advice pertaining to my situation. I was told that the Labor Department is a waste of time and that I should not go there for justice. But the good book says, never put your trust in man put your trust in God. So I came to the Labor Department to make a complaint and I was referred to one of the officers. He instructed me step by step in dealing with my situation. He told me to fill out a complaint form and the process start, started from there. The staff here at the Labor Department is very patient, I must say, kind, confidential also, and very cooperative. I was compensated by the company for my 14 years of service through the Labor, Depart through the Labor Department, and my matter was resolved. I was very happy with the result. Thanks to the Labor Department for intervening and resolving the matter, and remember, the Labor Department is always there for you. As an employee, by imp implementing a legal framework that fosters environment-friendly management practices. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Brown. She was very brave, wasn't she? Yes. yes, yes. Thank you very much. Well done. 
We expect the information that you hear about this afternoon will help you to make the right decisions when it comes to employment, as in the case of Ms. Brown. That's what we are hoping would be one of the takeaways. Ladies and gentlemen, there's been a change to the program. Unfortunately, the Honorable Minister for Labor and Natural Resources, now the Acting Premier, will be unable to speak with us this afternoon on this program. We are all aware of the support the Acting Premier has provided to the, to the Labor Department in his substantive role as the Minister of Labor. And he would want me to tell you that if he could have been here this afternoon, he would have been. He did not leave us wanting, however. We are very pleased to have addressing us this afternoon the Permanent Secretary for the Ministry of Natural Resources and Labor, Mr. Ronald Smith Berkeley, who I'll invite now to come and give some remarks. Mr. Berkeley. Good afternoon. Um, after listening to uh, Ms. Brown, I think. If I were to lose my employment, I know exactly where to go, uh, to, to the Labor Department. Um, all right, I'll accept the uh, uh, protocol that uh, has been established uh, earlier. And in just a little while, the Labor Commissioner and her team will take you through some information that will become very useful as you navigate the labor environment in this territory. However, my brief remarks will be focused on you and your interface with our territory. You will no doubt be faced with a whole new set of cultural norms, attitudes, behaviors. Your ability to integrate into this new society surrounds and your surroundings, armed with your own unique cultural backgrounds and expectations, is paramount to the success of your expatriate experience. You have come here with your own ideas, values, customs, but I ask that you try to understand our culture and overlay that on your own perspective. In order to lessen the cultural shock, I am hoping that you would have done some research prior to your arrival. Most of you, if not all, are moving from a larger jurisdiction to a much smaller one, and we find living and working here in this territory to be radically different. So it is essential that you uh, have the cultural skills needed to adapt and understand the new customs and traditions that you will encounter to optimize your expatriation experience. Your ability to assimilate and, to, and the speed at which this is done is very critical. The novelty of being in a new country might seem a great experience at first, but when that wears off, you will no doubt have to deal with the mores of a new culture. And I hope that, you will, that the information that you will garner here today will be able to assist you as you adapt to your new way of life. I urge you not to underestimate this move. You will meet some challenges in your quest to become acclimatized. And, I, and, and please don't, fool, don't be fooled by the fact that you, may not, that you may know someone from your home country. You need to keep in mind that the person has been here for a while and may have already become acclimatized to this territory. And therefore, that person certainly should be able to assist you on your journey, as it were. Although socialization with other expatriates partially compensates for the lack of local friendship, it is certainly not an ease to integration in our local society. I urge you, therefore, to get involved read a local newspaper, watch the local news, join a social club such as Rotary, Lions, Zanta, and the like, join a gym. In short, any extracurricular activity which can serve both as a personal outlet 
and a means by which to improve your cultural knowledge. There is nothing worse than being on the periphery of a society. This will happen, however, if you fail to get involved. The litmus test for determining if you are truly acclimatized is when you can call back home to your loved ones and tell them that you have tried, or better yet, that you have prepared from scratch the world-renowned BVIP soup with milk and sugar. <laughs> I encourage you to be in the moment. Your decision to accept employment overseas suggests that you expect things to be different from what you are accustomed to at home. Part of the adventure, if you like, is embracing the uncomfortableness that comes with assimilation to another way of life. When it feels like it's too much, remember that in the midst of the experience, that you are in the midst of an experience and that you will be stronger because of it. Why are you here? And what do you want from this experience? These are questions that I think you need to ask yourself. But from the perspective of our territory, I will try and answer them for you. You are here because you have something to offer. This territory has developed a construct called SEED, which stands for social, economic, environment, and direction or governance, to which all of our actions are connected. Therefore, the sustainability of our economy, which hinges on financial services and tourism, in part, will be our effectiveness in creating an environment where cultural norms from some 129 countries can create an economy in a population of about 28,000 that is second to none. In the words of Dr. the Honorable Kedrick Pickren, Deputy Premier and Minister for Natural Resources and Labor, and currently our Acting Premier, as we move forward deliberately, resolutely, tempered with an abundance of caution to build a great little nation, we are fully understanding that this cannot happen without help from the outside and without your help as expatriate workers. The benefits to be derived from this territory economically, socially, legally, and otherwise is for all who reside within its borders. Therefore, I want you to not survive, but to thrive because only in so doing that will this territory be able to achieve the objective as articulated by our minister. On behalf of our Deputy Premier, the Minister for Natural Resources and Labor, and now our Acting Premier, I welcome you to our shores and trust that this will be one of your most memorable and rewarding experience. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Berkeley, for providing those very important remarks and for certainly bringing the ministry's perspective and the quotation from the Honorable Minister of Labor. The orientation, which will begin immediately after this opening ceremony, will expose the new employees to a number of topics, including the functions of the Labor Department. We will speak about types of work permits. We talk about the process of the work permit. We will speak about inspections occupational safety and health, employment, retrenching, disputes, and terminations. So those of you who will stay beyond this opening ceremony, those are some of the topics that we'll be covering. We know that this type of program, this opening ceremony, and the orientation to follow could not be possible without the involvement of a number of persons. So I'm going to now invite our employment services manager Mrs. Kishan Cupid Bratwith to move the vote of thanks.
Let's welcome her as she comes, please. Good afternoon, everyone. I've been tasked to thank everyone who has made today's um, opening ceremony possible. I'll first like to begin with the permanent secretary, Mr. Ronald Berkeley, for his remarks. The our labor commissioner, Mrs. Janice Raima, for so ably chairing the program. Mrs. Michelle McLean, our deputy labor commissioner, for the invocation. And Mr. Miss Marcia Brown and Mr. Trevor Grant for sharing their experience with the labor department. I think they did a great job. What do you think? Okay, we had some persons behind the scene, of course. Um, first off, I'd like to thank all the staff, all the labor staff, for preparing for all the support for this program and getting the room ready for today's event. Um, our information officer, Ms. Smith, and the team at GIS, facilities, management unit, and the premier's office for the chairs and flags, respectively. Also, the journalists from the various media houses for coming and covering today's event. And finally, you the employees who saw the benefit in this program as shown by your attendance here today. Thank you, and we will now begin in shortly. No, okay. I'll turn it over to Ms. Reimer. Thank you very much, Mrs. Mrs. Bratwith. I'd like to also add my thanks and appreciation as expressed by the Employment Services Manager we want to recognize our permanent secretary for his continued support to the department. I want to recognize my very hard working staff. They're here somewhere working. Thank you very much. You want to stand, stand who are here? Who's here? Just you two, in fact. And the others are outside. Very good. The others are still working. And I want to remind you, and I see Mr. Kedrick Maloon there by the door. It was such a full house. We want to recognize his arrival, Mr. Kedrick Maloon, the director of the BVI Finance Center, who's here with us today as well. Yes. Okay. Welcome, sir. And I want to remind you, lastly, the new employees, that the Labor Department is, is here for you if you need us. We want to thank you for your contribution that you will make to the territory, and we certainly wish you all the best in your employment career. We ask you to continue to be the best that you can be. That's why you've been selected out of all those persons that would have applied for these positions. So we've come to the end of our opening ceremony.